Hello friends, in the previous topic we have discussed about the chromatography and the types of chromatography. So here basically we are going to talk about the thin layer chromatography. So what are the principles and what are the techniques? So this is what we are going to talk about in this topic. So now let's get started. <music> So friends, here we are going to talk about the thin layer chromatography. For that, we have to understand what is the principle behind the thin layer chromatography. And for that, we have the principle is very simple. That is the thin layer chromatography that is TLC is based on the principle of differential adsorption of the components of a mixture. So this is one of the technique where we can easily separate the two components which are in the form of a mixture and this can be done with the help of the following techniques which are going to talk about. So the techniques which are very much important and which we must understand in this is the following. So for this technique we need a glass plate and in this glass plate basically we are dipping this glass plate in a silica gel or in an alumina gel and this kind of glass plate is basically known as chromatoplate and after this with the help of a capillary we can take a particular mixture in which suppose the both the components are being present to which we have to separate it out or to which we have to detect so that could be taken with the help of the capillary and it could be added on the baseline of the chromatoplate that is thin layer chromatoplate so now this thin layer chromatoplate is basically dipped in a beaker which consists of a solvent and that solvent is nothing known as it is known as eluent so this solvent it acts like a mobile phase and the thin layer chromatoplate it acts like a stationary phase on which the mixture is being added on the baseline so this can be explained with the help of a diagram but i want to to discuss about all the techniques which are involved in the tlc so after that we could find as the element obviously it will rise up or the solvent it will get raised up so when it will rise up it will take along with it the mixture and because of the adsorption even the mixture obviously it consists of the two components even they will get rise according to the solvent which has moved and that is how basically we can find different positions of the components which are which we can observe on the thin layer plate and this is how basically it depends upon the degree of adsorption that we could find that is there are different height to which the particular component are being raised to so as the element reaches the upper end what we do is we remove the chromatoplate from the beaker and that is how basically the chromatoplate is now dried obviously we understood that is the solvent is absorbed in the thin layer chromatoplate and that is the reason we have to dry it up and the solvent which we use it is basically a volatile component and that's the reason the thin layer chromatoplate can be dried up very easily so for that we can also understand suppose if the color components are being present in a mixture so it can be easily visible and we can easily determine that how much the particular component has been raised from the baseline and this is how basically we can easily detect which compound it is so for that we have a particular diagram so that i could help you out to understand that how this technique works so for that we have a particular beaker in which a solvent is already present and to which basically we have added a thin layer chromatoplate and this is the baseline that we have and that has a particular spot in it so because of the adsorption we could find that is this spot obviously suppose if it consists of two components so because of the adsorption we could find that is there are two different spots that we could obtain but also at different heights so this is the height that has been reached from the baseline and that is how basically these two components and it is not necessary that the two components will be colored component out of which one will be colorless so in that case also suppose if we have to determine that which component it is and suppose if the component consists of the amino acid or the amino group and which are basically they are colorless in nature so by spraying the particular solution that is known as nail hydrogen solution we can easily detect that the colorless spot is the one which consists of the amino acid and this is how basically we can easily determine or this is how basically we can easily separate out the two mixtures so not only this technique is to just separate the two components but it is also applicable to determine which component it is and this can be easily done by knowing the rf value that is known as retardation factor and what is retardation factor let me explain you that so friends retardation factor is denoted by rf and it is nothing but it is the ratio of the 
height of the component which has raised from the baseline that is suppose x to the height of the solvent which has raised that is y. So by knowing the particular RF value because every component has its own RF value so by knowing the RF value which we can measure with the help of a scale so that is how basically we can determine that this would be the possible component in the mixture. So this is how basically the TLC that is thin layer chromatography technique it is and that's it. So thank you friends for watching this video I hope you have understood this topic very clearly and I hope I'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe eager channel. Thank you so much.